Loco Loco, B O K O space Loco L O C O. The stealing of hundreds of girls from northern Nigerian families and schools in the name of God for slavery, no less, is the triumph of madness over reason. That's the latest acts of Boko Haram, a Hausa group that claims to be at war with Western education, is at war not with Westernism, but with fellow Hausas and Nigerians, and a war with Islam itself. There has always been a tenuous tension between Nigeria's various ethnicities and regions, but these conflicts have almost always been resolved short of war. It appears Boko Haram wishes to push across that line. These assaults on children to enslave them or sell them is particularly odious and has sparked international protest. This attack on education comes in the name of a man who so admired learning that a tradition quotes the Prophet Muhammad saying, science lights the road to paradise. Another quote called a hadith states, the ink of a scholar is more holy than the blood of a martyr. And still another, take knowledge even from an unbeliever. But at its core lies an intense hatred of women and females. Although not well known, Muhammad was for his time and place quite the feminist. He loved women. And in one of his first acts, forbade the killing of baby girls, something common among the Arab tribes then. The first convert was his wife, Khadija, and women seeking freedom from an oppressive culture. This madness is a modern creation of greed, of ignorance, of misogyny. It is Boko Loco. From Imprisoned Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Oh yeah, black sun in the hizzle, all oh, for shizzle dizzle. Get a little <laughs> headroom on camera one there, please. Camera one, camera one, I need a little headroom. Camera one, I need a little headroom. Bumping, ah, my head there, see that? Yes. All right. <laughs> the views and opinion of the arena does not affect that of Comcast, its staff, or employees. With that said, I want to say, viewer discretion is advised. Today we're going to discuss um, human rights issues in the Islamic world. Um, we're going to discuss, you know, places like Saudi Arabia. We're going to discuss Boko Haram in Nigeria, as you heard Mumia um, commenting on. We're going to tie, talk about some ties. Do those ties belong to Turkey? <laughs> Do those ties belong to the U.S.? They belong to the U.K.? Do we have ties to Israel? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, we're going to get started. And I'm going to introduce the lovely Miriam to my right. How you doing, Miriam? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And to her right, we got King of the Hindu Israelites. I be your servant, Gidon. You be the yes, king. All. You be the king. You be the king. <laughs> the king with the bling. Okay, and to his right, we got Brother Vince. Hello, 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 everybody. All right, and to his right, we got Brother Yanga. What's good? What is good, good brother? Good. Always a pleasure to be on the arena. You know that, bringing the hot topics, right. doing what we do. Right. So I'm looking forward to the show today, man. Okay, okay. Now, before we were going to even get on the topic of Boko Haram, we were going to discuss, you know, Saudi Arabia. You know, I had seen videos on YouTube, you know, the women mm -hmm. and their hijabs, they were like, Doing selfies and they driving. Yeah. I mean, revolutionary acts, you know what I'm Man, saying? Man, especially in Saudi. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> but it's revolutionary to be driving and taking selfies anyway. Yes. It's dangerous. Right. But then, you know, I come to find out we got some political prisoners in Saudi Arabia. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a dangerous thing. Oh, Mary, you already know what this was. What's going on with these political prisoners? Well, I mean, um, just like we were discussing earlier, the, Saudi Arabia oppresses and tries to repress any movements that are that of minorities. So a lot of the political prisoners are actually Shia. And mm. as you know, Saudi Arabia is like very Sunni. It's like a Sunni Islamic country. Mm -hmm. And pretty much any dissent 
you will be imprisoned, you will be tortured, and you cannot voice your opinion. Like we were saying, you can't speak out against the king, mm -hmm. can't speak out against the Saudi Arabian government, the monarchy. So, right. yeah, I mean, just everything is done um, for authority, for power, like not letting women drive. There is absolutely, there is absolutely no Islamic basis for not allowing women to drive. We are entitled to the same, entitled to the same rights that right. men are entitled to. So I, have a, you know, so I have a question, and this is my question for Maddie um, coming in too, because we find, and and you know, growing up Muslim and being a Muslim, we don't find any basis for any discrimination or uh, practices like that against the women. Mm -hmm. So is this a cultural thing being disguised as Islam, or is you know? Do, is there some religious basis for not just the driving? We also know in some Islamic countries they don't allow the women to uh, go to school. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. is this like a cultural thing amongst the Arab nation, uh, some beef that they have with their women, or is there some precedence in Islamic Europeans for this type of behavior? Well, I definitely, it's definitely not cultural, but it's societal. Okay. Whereas, you know, like Arab um, culture, Arab history has, you know, like um, embraced women's rights and empowered women. The first university in the world was started by a woman in Morocco, mm. a Muslim woman, the okay. first university. And um, women had rights, women were writers. I mean, even now they do have rights and they are writers, but just like the Arab man is oppressed, mm -hmm. the Arab woman is oppressed even more. You know, so it's just like everywhere else. I, like I said, it's just the way society is. Mm -hmm. Society right now in the Arab world is, um, I don't know, it oppresses anyone that is different or does something that shouldn't be done. I don't know, it's hard to explain mm. that. It's just society, it's not culture, and okay. it's not religion. Okay. Okay, okay. Well, Gideon, that sounds like your kind of place there. Well, you know, when we talk about culture, it, it is a reflection of the overall agenda of the government. Mm. And... Uh, the inflections of trying to make a secular, a secular society mm -hmm. is to take people away from their culture because capitalism is, in a capitalist society is not about culture. Mm -hmm. It's about your dollars mm -hmm. and how they impact on the economy. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the uh, issues of the, the system and its government trying to take away the rudiments of cultural uh, traditions, it is to make the system paramount in the minds of the people. So if we are talking about Saudi Arabia or America, no matter what, what they're trying to do is called social engineering, mm -hmm. where the people can be fashioned in a way that the government can lead them in the direction that they want them to go. So when we have dissent, on no matter what, whether it's a verbal dissent or an action, the government will target that as abnormal, and it has to be subdued. Um, I, well, I actually wanted to say, I think you made really great points about how it's the government that influences culture, and that actually makes my point easier to, you know, get across. Whereas in the Arab world, I'm sure you all know, like with capitalism, when um, a man is oppressed at work, and when he is um, doing job, when he's doing a job that he's not getting the right compensation for, he goes home and he takes it out on his wife. Mm -hmm. And in turn, the wife takes it out on her children. Yeah. And then you have just this cycle of oppression yes. and misery mm -hmm. and depression. Mm -hmm. So I think in the United States, the government influences culture. How are women oppressed? in the United States, you know, they're um, running around in their bikinis, you turn on the TV, mm -hmm. and they're like, mm -hmm. women, it, it's sexual oppression yes, for absolutely. women in the United it's, States yeah. and in the West. And I think in the Arab world, the government, the way oppression works, and it's because here they want to sell something. Right. They want to right. sell yes, you, exactly. you know, women's bodies, mm -hmm. buy this exactly. new cologne, buy this perfume, buy this whatever. So that's how women's oppression is in the West. And right. it, of course it exists in the Arab world as well, whereas it's you don't want any dissent. You right. don't want anybody to speak out. So you oppress the Arab man, and then the Arab man oppresses the Arab woman. Yeah. So, you know, that that's how it works. Like, you just, they make things up. Like, you have to cover yourself 
yourself head to toe. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just the it's just the way government influences culture to get people to condition people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what is the it's and it's interesting, especially yeah. coming from a Muslim or coming from a Muslim woman. So what is it? Because you'll find over here in America mm -hmm. that they will say, like you said, that that's oppressing the sexism, mm -hmm. the bikinis on television, yeah. and things of this nature, and they will turn around and say that uh, the Islamic governments are oppressing the women by the hijabs, the scarves, yeah. and the uh, kimars are the long uh, garments yeah. and things, and the women being covered up. So what is the line between that? Because in, in some of the fence, when I was deep in the community, I, um, you know, that was a question I had. Why do the women, you know, why do the women, and they said it is to prevent that uh, immoral Mm -hmm. Or that decadent society, yeah, the definitely. society of bikinis and mm -hmm. women wearing tight fitting yeah. things and the cause this lewdness and men to lose their mind. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that's unfair pressure on the women? Or is that saying that the men are just, we're just barbaric and savage that if we see a sister with jeans on, we're going to lose our mind <laughs> yeah, and attack yeah. her or stuff like that? So, what is your response, one, to being a Muslim that Islam is oppressive to women? And two, how far does it go or should it go in the. Um, covering or the dress code of women and the behavior of the sisters. Okay, yeah. Did you want to say something? Well, I, well, I wanted to add to that, too. Not only that, but... Uh, cause you I need know, to write these down. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I didn't to that one, but I have another question relating to the education. I know I heard Gideon talking earlier about how, I guess, the... Uh, Boko Haram, they felt threatened that, you know, the women are being educated through Western education. So we talked about culture. So when do you balance culture and human rights? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have mm -hmm. human rights too, right? right. Yeah. As far as, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I know that's a compound question. No, 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 no. I understand. I understand the Y'all can also please come in. I don't want yeah. to be talking about it. I think, like you said, Islam gives women all these rights. You are supposed to wear the hijab or the headscarf. You have to wear the hijab, but you shouldn't be forced to do it. Nothing in Islam is compulsory where you should be forced to do anything. And I think on the street, I think you should tell women that they should dress conservatively so that nothing happens to them. And if a man does take advantage of a woman, if he rapes a woman, it is still his fault. Mm -hmm. But you should tell women to look out for themselves, to dress conservatively. And I think also there is something that we don't talk about, but it's how things are depicted in the media. There is a difference between seeing a girl in a bikini and you just see her, and seeing 50 women in a bikini on the television. Like in Russia, um, with the Olympics, what people don't know is that Russia doesn't actually, you're not allowed to not be gay. You're not, gay marriage isn't banned, but you're not allowed to have, you know, gay propaganda on television, which I agree with because it's what people see that makes them do something. Like right now you have girls and boys who are in middle school and elementary school saying they're gay. Exactly. What makes them think they're gay is that right. they see it on television exactly. and they, they don't even know what's going on. So if you see someone, your acquaintance who's gay or who's whatever, that doesn't make you want to be gay. It mm -hmm. doesn't really affect you. But when you see it and you're told this is right, this is the right thing to do. So what I'm trying to say is that women should have the choice to do whatever they want in society. But I think you shouldn't have these same women wearing bikinis and um, promoting women's oppression on television mm -hmm. or in the media. I know you had a I have a question, yeah, because I'm a little confused uh, because of the reading that I did. It said Saudi law was based on Islamic law, sure. correct? Yeah. Uh, but you all just stated that there's nothing in Islamic law that says women should be oppressed, right? Yeah, of course, on the same So Islam. where did that divide come in? How did it get to the point where women are so oppressed if it's not based on the, the religious teachings and beliefs, then where and how did that start? Let me, let me, let me jump in here a little bit because I believe what we're looking at is a cultural directive based on the dominance of the man, the masculine in okay. the society. And because of the corruption of man in the biblical text, the Messiah, Yeshua, came back and had to change the priesthood mm -hmm. to include the woman because it's naturally man has physically more strength, but in the spiritual realm, we are equal. Mm -hmm. So the equality of man will be reached only in the spirit realm. But because man in his brute force nature 
not only is ruling and dominating the planet, he's ruling and dominating the woman, but she's submitting to that domination because she's not marching against manhood right. and its mm -hmm. domination and its destruction mm -hmm. of the planet. She, and she actually controls the pornographic industry, yeah. but it's fermented through slavery, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. which Atlanta is the home of the United States yeah, for, for sex, sex trafficking, traffic, man. Can you that? child trafficking. They never stop slavery. So when we talk about this issue of education, this is a very interesting. So, so we don't influence Boko Haram then. Yep. Right. Well, it's never see slavery is an age old institution, mm -hmm. sub Saharan slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade. But the issue of education, I think, is very unique because there has been a demeaning of the education that has been trained in the training of a woman from its inception. Traditional uh, parochial education is not the original tool that was used to train women in how to be mothers. Doctors, teachers, the first instructors of our soul to say, the only point I'm making is okay. this concept of education and formalized education versus education in the household and how to be a mother and the first teacher is still excellent education. And those the Islamic tradition and Hebrew cultures that teach women outside the parochial school is also valuable, just like parochial education. I want to jump in here and say one, I want and the dress to come back to Gideon, but I want to start with what the brother is saying. First of all, it's like you're saying, where did they get these? Everything we have to understand is all political. Right. So no, I, I think that Africans in America, and I've said time and time again, right. we grasp a spiritual aspect of our religion, but not the political and social aspects of it. Right. And the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salam, was a very political. Mm -hmm. It was it was social changing. Islam was a revolution. Mm -hmm. You see, and it revolutionized that whole at that particular time. That time, so we're looking at Saudi was the same thing. Saudi before it was Saudi Arabia was Arabia. After the death of the Prophet, and a lot of people had established a lot of practices that w weren't Islamic. Mm -hmm. Two factors came into what is now called Saudi Arabia. There was a king called Saud, you know, Ibn Saud, mm -hmm. and he okay. teamed up with a religious man, a sheikh called Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahhab. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when they teamed up, and he appealed to him on the religion, let's go, let's clean up Saudi, let's go clean the uh, uh, club up, let's get rid of this, what they call uh, um, um, people who are innovations, what they call in Islam, is called bid'ah. They was calling these innovations in the religion, so he appealed to his religious side, mm -hmm. and he funded them. Okay. And they made a divide. He said, I'll control the political, I'll be the king, the soldiers do this, and you control the religion. Mm -hmm. So anything, when you find... When, we, when they teach their women, when they teach their children. And this is what I say that uh, as us as Africans in America, we don't do. They went into the Sharia, they went into the Islamic laws, and they interpreted them the ways that affected their society. Mm -hmm. See, our problem is over here, we go into the Sharia, we go into Islamic laws, and we try to interpret them the way that it affects their society, oh, right. mm -hmm. not the way that it affects our society. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this is when they came up with a lot of their oppressive things. For whatever reason, I don't know, I'm not over there, where they felt like women shouldn't draw or women shouldn't learn or this is, because these were things that they felt like were major issues for them. Mm. Us as Africans over here in America, when we take Islam and take on the religion of Islam, then we have to look and address our specific needs and issues. Exactly. And we'll find that us, a lot of the things that they do over there for whatever reason they feel like we're better than our society, we will find will be detrimental hmm. if we try to implement over here in our society. Like one, I tell you, and I went through the wife thing, my wife and I divorced behind this, hmm. like the women thing. Our women are not going to be quiet. Mm -hmm. That's just a bottom line. <laughs> I don't care. You can quote some Quran, some Hadith Muhammad, some, some of the Sahara. Yeah, they won't. Yeah, it's, 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 and like we were talking the other day, like you said, Palestinian sisters yeah. are known for being very strong, outspoken, fierce, ferocious, you know, believing women, yeah. and especially anti-oppression. Mm -hmm. So you got a lot of people, they, they have these interpretations, and this is why I was, when we had talked the other day, when I could see the division even in the so-called Arab world where they was, you know, the Palestinians, the Jordan, how they divided themselves, and I didn't think that is because the people who truly understand their religion and get the most benefit from their religion are people who take the word of God as they understand it and, and interpret it to the best of their society, despite right. what anybody else says, even if they proclaim or profess to practice the same religion. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So exactly. I think that that's what you have going on in society, uh, Saudi. And that is the answer a little bit of your question about the education. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with the taking of the women or anything of this nature, but when they say Western education, it may be something that is detrimental 
to their society. It may not be anti-education. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The key word to that was a Western education. Yeah. So right. if they're saying that this may not be the education that is the best for our society because we're looking over there at the African women in America. We look at them sisters so treating them brothers and we ain't trying to have them. <laughs> 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 yeah, so some right. schools now. <laughs> you know. I well, know, Vincent, you had some ties, right? You know, I like to always look to the yeah. money trail, you know, because yeah. like, oh, oh, yeah. we, we joked about how Boko Haram, they barely got shoes on their feet, but they got $100,000 rocket right. launches. You know what? Mm, where's the money coming from? Where's the money coming from? Well, uh, in one of the articles I read, it stated that um, Boko Haram has received some financial backing from the United Kingdom and from Saudi Arabia itself. Mm-hmm. Not only has received um, financial backing, but it has also um, served as somewhat of a safe haven for some Boko Haram uh, right. f- members. Okay. Um, like in 2004, uh, one of the Boko Haram leaders, uh, Muhammad, Muhammad Yusuf, excuse me, uh, he took refuge in Saudi Arabia in 2004 uh, as he was fleeing from uh, the Nigerian Security Council. Wait, so is that the current guy? or No, that's not the current guy. Okay. This, this guy, uh, Muhammad Yusuf, passed in 2009. Okay, And right. I believe the uh, leadership went to the current guy in 2009. I see, I see. Um, so. so there are definitely ties with uh, Saudi Saudi Arabia and Boko Haram. Yeah. I know. Now, um, now, Mary, I know we talked about some ties between Boko Haram and Turkey. Yeah. Can, can you break that down for us? Well, actually, I think um, Yango would be better at that because he was talking about how Turkey is actually so strange because they um, are a Islamic secular country. Right. As you know, nothing even even in the, like um, over ninety eight percent of Turkey's population is Muslim, but mm-hmm. alcohol is frequent. They drink alcohol. There's prostitution. It's actually like Atlanta. It's a hub for mm-hmm. sex trafficking, and um, so it's just really strange, and now Erdogan is under a lot of the Turkish Prime Minister, under a lot of heat for um, supporting the Muslim Brotherhood, right. which is in opposition to Saudi Arabia and the UAE and um, Kuwait, who are against the Muslim Brotherhood. But like I was saying earlier, Saudi Arabia, who is that is a U.S. ally, operates exactly like the United States, where they form these organizations, they help breed them, and then later on they call them terrorist organizations. Right. Like mm-hmm. now, like you're saying, well, I don't know what Saudi Arabia has said about Boko Haram, but I know that for the Muslim Brotherhood, when they were kicked out of Egypt, mm-hmm. they offered them refuge and the Muslim Brotherhood leaders were operating outside of Saudi Arabia. And now in the new coup, the coup that took place in Egypt, Saudi Arabia said the Muslim Brotherhood is a terrorist organization and they do not have the right to... um, It sounds like the United States. Yeah, it sounds exactly like the United States. And actually what they did, which is exactly like the United States during the Iran-Iraq war with Saddam Hussein, they were Saddam Hussein's allies, and they were like, yeah, yeah. beat those dirty Persians. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. They were like, you could see, like, letters of, um, you know, them sending, like, really, like, disgusting things about, like, oh, massacre them all and stuff like that, things mm-hmm. like that. And then during the Gulf War, which involved the United States being against the Iraq, they also allied with the United States, and they were like, time to overthrow Saddam. Mm-hmm. You know, so they're, you know, it's all very strategic. And like we said, it's not religious. But not Muslim Brotherhood isn't religious. It's all political. It's all political. All political. All now, political. now, since we're talking political yeah. politics, yeah. you know, it's always tied to some economics. Always, every oh, time. Yeah. And economics mm-hmm. is always tied to some resources. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. And if I recall, I believe um, Nigeria got some oil. Big time mm-hmm. oil. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So oh, oh, oil. Oh, oil. Yeah. Well, see, there is, therein lies this industrialized beast that's consuming the earth. The capitalist machine is not just the capitalist machine, it's the Soviet's machine. Mm -hmm. It's anybody that uses carbon-based fuels Mm -hmm. and they're extracting and being taken from the internal structure of the earth is ultimately going to have an end because they are finite, all these resources. So, Gideon, does it make sense to, uh, I mean, you you got America, you got Sounds like Saudi Arabia and mm-hmm. Turkey. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they have friends that they say, you know, we're going to give you some weapons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're going to give you some mm-hmm. guns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Some training. We're going to yeah. give you yeah. some training. Exactly. 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 Right. Right. All that good stuff. And so, but when, 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 when the stuff hits the fan, they're like, oh, oh, you guys are terrorists. Yeah. Well, yeah. see, yeah. not understanding what the whole issue is. These 
European nations are unifying to fight against our people. We are the problem. Mm -hmm. See, the, the world economies are based on what they have on the NASDAQ, the stock market. We right. have nothing on the stock market. Yeah. We are total consumers. So the kings of the earth, this is why Psalms 2 is being written. The kings of the earth are assembling themselves to destroy the mighty and the holy people. That's what it's all about. Then they can run rampant on the earth with their uh, industrialized machines and extraction said, of the earth. They, could, they already running rampant. Right. Well, they are, That's but we are part of the It's outdated. <laughs> 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 We get duped, man. We get duped. We get duped because I think that one of the things that we talked about on the show one time before, us as being Africans here in America are in a very uh, powerful position to be very vocal in our dissent and in our disdain for the oppression and the imperialism that is happening. But what we don't do is we don't, like we're saying, all of this is political. We don't see the political wrangling and the politically maneuvering right. behind the scenes. One of my problems with the Boko Haram is the fact that there again, not only does it add to the Islamophobe, because after even Nixon said, <laughs> after communism, you know, we're going to go to our next enemy, which is Islam. You understand that in order to be a, a power and to get people to rally on your team, you have to have an enemy. Mm -hmm. So Islam is now the new enemy. So not only does it contribute to this Islamophobe, it also, us as African people, should be upset because it also paints us there again to be savages, barbaric, you know what I'm saying, inhumane, right. doing some stupid stuff. They've, they've, they've used us as dupes again. I think that in order for Saudi to get their act together and other Islamic places to get their act together, the Muslims all around the world, and especially the group that I belong to, the African Muslim here in America, should definitely point out, should hold Saudi's feet to the fire, get past the superstitions, get past religion. Yes, they're the guardians of the Kaaba, and they're the guardians of Masjid and Nabawi, the, uh, the prophets, prayer place, the prophets' mosque, and things of this nature. But hold their feet to the fire if it isn't nothing but according to Islam. What they do, they do do the political thing. They will use the people. They, they, they duped Boko Haram into it. I'm sure in Boko Haram you have some sincere... God-loving <laughs> brothers and sisters who are doing this for the face of their Lord, doing this for the pleasure of their God, but they don't understand that they're being puppets. Too many times we take a hand-off approach. We won't get into politics. You understand what I'm saying? We'll find you'll find the Muslims that will get behind the Palestinian struggle, and I've seen it so many times without talking to a Mariam or without knowing what the struggle is, but just based solely on that they're oppressing Muslims. Well, but you have to know that. The, the, let the, me interject uh, briefly, and I want you to jump in yeah, here because you know we. we this <laughs> is jump in, bro. But the issue of Boko Haram and how they have orchestrated this political move to get media attention, I think, of course, is a master stroke. If you're going to deal with killers, you have to kill. Because mm -hmm. you have to, you want to deal with men stillers, you steal people. Mm -hmm. That gets their attention because this is what they do. Mm -hmm. Now, when you talk about the parallels between Christianity and its educational system and Islam, as a Hebrew, I would prefer Islam because I know Islam came out of the Hebrew culture and Judaism. But when you look at what Christianity is doing, they are enslaving people and it's doing it right in front of our faces and yeah. we don't even know that the slavery is going on, or whether it's the slavery right after hurricane, the uh, so-called earthquake in Haiti, mm -hmm. when they were going over there to pick up the children and got caught at the airport, right, yeah. or whether it was Hurricane Katrina, yeah. when the fat children were separated from the families, and we've never even gotten an account mm -hmm. of how many families, whether they got back with the children or didn't, the number of people that came from Louisiana here are still, those stories are still going on. So when we talk about Boko Haram and what they did, I believe, again, as you indicated, it's a move by the power elite to galvanize the righteous, go along to get along Negroes, to say, see, mm -hmm. see how they're doing over there? We need to go and run behind mm -hmm. John Wayne and his crew and go and make right. And what they have been stealing children right here under our nose. And you've been and voting for it. Right. Yeah. Right. Hey, but I want to state that um, this isn't the first time Boko Haram has taken exactly. children. Right. Come on. Okay. Come on. Okay. Come on. Uh, it's been going on for quite some time, at least since 2010, 2011. Hmm. Okay. Um, 
But they um, right now it's becoming a big issue with the 200 girls. Uh, I read a conspiracy theory today. We all know that the U.S. are very political strategists. Okay? Yes. Oh yeah. And in order for the U.S. to get involved in anything major. There has to be a major up yes. war and a major outcry mm. uh, from around the world. Mm. That's right. When the Boko Haram first took these girls, it was very hush hush. It was mm -hmm. very quiet. Mm -hmm. When they started picking up, I won't say media attention. I'll say uh, internet attention. Mm. That's right. Um, that's when the United States government yeah. decided to step in and say, "Oh, we might need to put our two cents in." But the conspiracy theory is that the United States and the CIA has had a hand in growing Boko Haram. Come oh, on, come on. This is how they do it. Playing both sides of the field. That's right. Wrong. Even possibly supplying them with some of the weapons. Mm. Because in 2009, Boko Haram was considered a machete-wielding mob. Right. Okay, right. they didn't have all of these exactly. weapons. And rocket launchers. And no yeah. rocket launchers. Yeah. Yeah. They don't have okay. this uh, extensive training that they have. Right. And so the theory is, that the U.S. is playing both yes. sides again. That's right. right. Back in this Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. But now that they've given the Boko Haram a little power, mm -hmm. now the U.S. is saying, okay, now we can go over there mm -hmm. and we can start implementing some more political strategies right. exactly. to exactly. get these people out of here. And exactly. oh, in the meantime, we'll have to set up a few political Basis. military you know Boko Haram has ties to Al Qaeda mm -hmm. now right. I still remember the US made Al Qaeda yeah. Terrorist group number one. That's mm. right. And there's even stating that Bokarin may have some financial ties to uh, Saudi Arabia. Mm. Well, you know, uh, we, we're their boss now. Al Qaeda. <laughs> I don't know if you're. That's not a conspiracy theory. Oh, yeah. We I mean, they're employed of some of it. And I think what people want to forget is how the CIA really is like a movie. Where they really want to do things that are where they, like I just now pulled it up. Um, the Indo they wanted the Indonesian president to look bad, so they had a lookalike of him um, in a pornographic uh, video, uh, and, 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 and an attempt to discredit him mm. um, during the that was during the Cold War, and during the Cold War as well. Um, the CIA um, they on. American media, like on television, they could just tell the media, the media channels, this is a terrorist, and it would be a completely innocent person. Right. And they would have to broadcast it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They had to, yeah. like people, like what the movies show you, what TV shows you about the CIA and the FBI yeah. is not even representative <laughs> of how far they can go. Right. Their budget is unlimited. Uh, right. To have right. a freaking uh, pornographic video of a lookalike president, with a man with a mask on, right. like it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. Like to what extent? they're willing to go everything with politics for me I feel you have to get through the, the smoke screen yes right, in order to see the real truth everything mm -hmm. is smoke and mirrors I always think like I think like when Obama watches like CNN or Fox News and these presidents and they're hearing what we're like arguing about they're like these idiots don't even know one person what's going on it's hilarious and that's what I'm saying no authority, no government is to be trusted. Actually, I read the other day that Iran, which is this Islamic government like Saudi Arabia and Boko Haram and Al Qaeda, who claim to be so Islamic, they were um, they've cooperated with Israel mm -hmm. and extensively, and they had a friendship with Israel and they were allied with Israel during the Iran Iraq War. Israel was sending them weapons, mm -hmm. I believe, and then but then all on television, they're like, we hate each other, we're against Iran, and it's completely <laughs> fine. They'll still send you weapons. They'll still exactly. send you money. So no one is to be trusted. Actually, Hezbollah, you know, Lebanon, yeah. the Shia organization, yeah. they said they were in talks with the United States and Cyprus. Secretly yeah. meeting with mm, the United Nations. Mm, mm, These people are like, we're anti 
anti-America, we're anti-Israel, we're anti-the West. They're all liars. There's nobody that can be trusted in a place of authority. Well, it's like you said, everything, it's, it's, it's all political. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that it's just, we just have to wake up and accept the fact that it's all political and mm -hmm. start doing the political wrangling and the political maneuvering. Mm -hmm. They just play on our naivety. Mm -hmm. And if, yeah. if we still just, you know, yeah. go whatever our faith, our beliefs, or whatever, if we just still take that hard line and take that you know, straight down the road and everybody at their word, we're going to get played. Yeah. It goes back to like what you're saying about Boko Haram. I hear what you're saying, but I still, you know, one of the things I can't condone is because those are someone's daughters and sisters. Right. I don't exactly. care if they were teaching them right. uh, Catholicism. Right. You know, there's a better way to go about getting your point across. In, in A revolutionary understands that, you know, right. A revolutionary understands that we're guardians of the populace. Mm. You know, right. that's right. And I will yeah. struggle for the masses of people, for the people who can't fight and for the people who are not able to be vocal themselves. So the revolutionary is saying, I'm willing to sacrifice my flesh, my blood, my exactly. whatever mm -hmm. for the cause of my people. Right. So I think that this is what they have to do. They have to, and this is not, you know, for them not, I'm not saying that they have to be anti-Islamic. I'm thinking, I'm saying this, and I know even the people, my old companions and stuff have a problem with this, but they're going to have to develop sheikhs, and they're going to have to develop imams, and they're going to have to develop a, a, a shorter a council of Muslims to address the specific issues in their community or in their country mm -hmm. and figure out how to, how to do that. And we're going to have to go to the political table. There is no way around But you know now, they did do a political move, and, and it is movie-esque, if you will, because even after the taking of these young ladies, they said they wanted political prisoners to be released we, as well. Right. Right. And yeah, see, right. nobody, we yeah. haven't mentioned that up until now. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. There is a political strategy. You've also indicated that it was a political move, and it is all political, right. and that we need to play the political game. But see, the issue of politics in its very definition means many faces. Mm -hmm. And at the end right. of the day, we have to have a single face, and that face has to be unified around our people, what's going to be right and just for us and how we will extricate ourselves from the oppression of this existing system of mm -hmm. government. So why not make human rights that, that uh, uh, plight? Well, Can Malcolm you? tried that. See, this is, again, what we want to recognize is that the League of Nations mm -hmm. are against melanated, willing-haired people. Mm -hmm. They want to exterminate when I say us, I'm not just talking about us in America. Mm -hmm. I'm talking across Globally. the globe. Mm -hmm. right. right. That's why they're going into the continent right now. When you talk about the this government, and they're setting up nodes or uh, places of organization where they can control globally the world through a military arm. So, and there are corporations which now, like she indicated, have unlimited funds are the tools through which they will ultimately take possession of life itself. Because what they are doing is pat putting a patent pattern on the DNA and life through Monsanto and mm. other global corporations so that they can control the population. Yeah, of the it's population. all corporate. We, we talk about government. We're like, the government's behind everything. No, it's a corporation. Corporations fuel the government, exactly. the government fuels the military. Yes. Right, right. And it's all political farce. Mm -hmm. Incestuous. Right. <laughs> right. It's political farce. Good. Yeah. No good, brother. Um, uh, but like I said, it's make-believe. Um, like you said, we have to understand the political structure yep. of everything. I know for myself, I'm just now starting to really, truly understand American politics. Mm -mm. And I can understand and I can see why there are so many foreign countries that are upset with us. And yeah. uh, mm -hmm. have this 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 disdain for the United States. And then I started studying and learning uh, American foreign policy and mm -hmm. some of the dirt and some of the backhanded mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's my whole point. That's my whole point exactly. The first point is like you said. First of all, in America, they keep us so indulged. We're over. We're so overindulged. We don't care what's happening off. We have everything we need. So what the hell are we worried about? Right. You know, these other places got sanctioned, and I get medicine. And then I get food. I mean, when they sanction a country, when they sanction Cuba, right. it's not Fidel. Right. The rich people are going to have what they need. That's right. You know what I'm saying? The rich up there. So it's the poor people that go without the medicine, that go without the food, that go. And it's yeah. the masses. Secondly, on human rights, when we talk about human rights, 
absolutely right. I, we, we, we have to be humanitarians. But one of the problems with the African here in America, and especially the African here in America, we have put humanitarian, you know, we become humanitarian before we become African mm. or black. Mm. So when you get mm. into, just like we're talking about Iran, mm -hmm. and they said they were in, in, in bed with Israel mm -hmm. to uh, get the guns to fight against Iraq. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? First, everybody starts off with the Nationals. They will get in bed with some Yahudis. They mm -hmm. will get in bed with some Jews right. to keep this enemy off their butt. That's right. Right. You're Muslim. To kill, you kill, you kill, kill your own. To kill your own. Mm -hmm. But that shows you the power of self-preservation and mm -hmm. nationalism. Mm -hmm. That they're willing to get in bed with these enemies, you know what I'm saying, yes. and to go against their brothers of faith mm -hmm. to, to preserve themselves and to win a war. Mm -hmm. So the only way that we're really going to have, when you talk about human rights, and, and to be on the same page as humanitarians is that you have to understand that as humans, we all have to want the same things. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like as Africans here in America, mm -hmm. we want, we're, we're anti-pro. We know that we're oppressed. We know that we're going mm -hmm. through things. So we can relate and identify with our brothers and sisters in Palestine. But it's on that level that we're going through the same things. If I'm in a different boat mm -hmm. or if I don't understand what I'm going through, how am I exactly. going to identify with people over there and say that I'm truly humanitarian, I don't want oppression for them, mm -hmm. this is not what I want, because then we will get in bed mm -hmm. with anybody that will advance our personal uh, selfish greed. Exactly. Well, see, this is the thing. You have a global attack on the environment. See, the water, the earth, oh, yeah, the earth itself is being destabilized. Mm -hmm. So irrespective of a uh, political side or democrat i mean you, if you can't eat the food if the air is toxic is as a result of some type of nuclear accident the, you know we're the borough got barrels and stuff coming out all over none of that will make make right. any difference yeah but gideon do you i mean you have to speak their language first oh, no, that's why language is blood and war Oh, 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 hold on, hold on, Gideon. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's do this on a local level. You know what I'm saying? Like Yang and I, we mm -hmm. talk about a, a a political strategy as far as, you know, I mean, like I said, it worked for the gays and it worked for the Hispanics. You know what I'm saying? Get their attention first. But they are a part, they understand what the agenda of the oligarchy or the leading elite the ruling elite is. Okay. Is to destabilize the traditional nuclear family. That was why the uh, sexual deviants were able to organize as a revolutionary group. With the, it, it was a coup d'etat within the system. No, Gideon, I disagree with that. Okay. We have had homosexuals since the beginning of time, correct? But they haven't had rights that have been right. to frame. Right, so they, 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 well, they really really right. William mentioned about our children in schools right. now having confusion about their sexuality because right. they're being given these images of men kissing men and women kissing women. How did they women? get to that point, I think, what Black Sun is saying? Well, it's because of a secularism in a capitalist uh, uh, society. Yeah. And that's why uh, the those right-thinking people have to fight against the system. We, we're not going to be able to match their uh, artificially created materialism because they have a global network of good old boys. And these good old wow, boys are deep. set up to kill melanated, woolly hair people and take over the land. Ain't that what they've been doing? Yeah, I, I, can yeah. I, can I can agree with that. I can agree with that. I can agree with that. One of the things is when you look at though, when you look at <laughs> ethnic groups over here, that one of the things they have flex is their political muscle. Hello. They 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 have lobbyists, the homosexuals. And military they, muscle. Yeah, yeah, but the, the homosexuals did it without a shot being fired. That's you right. know, one of the things is they got tired of being bashed. They just got that. They understood that they had a commonality, that they had one goal, they had one vision. They got their people together, and they flexed a political muscle. And yet, on top of that, they wanted to control the economics. So if, exactly. if this uh, uh, guy A was in the hospital, he wanted to leave his money to his partner B. Yeah. That's money controlled exactly. in the society. They successfully divided the society. But how did he, how did he, how did he, right, but he catered to their greed. This is a capitalist society, like you said, that corporations run. So what they did, what we don't do as, as African people, like we were talking earlier about the Trayvon Martin thing, when they boycotted, when the Jews, just like the Jews, when the Jews boycotted, they boycotted. When the homosexuals boycotted, they boycotted. When we boycotted, we played. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Trayvon Martin, prime example. Everybody runs to Florida. Trayvon, Trayvon, Florida made billions. Yeah. We, we slept at their hotels, yeah, we ate at their restaurants, we bought sunflower seeds in uh -oh. Arizona, uh -oh. we went to the Foot Lockers and bought the hoodies. Uh -oh. So we still didn't do an economic boycott. Just like I tell people, if you look at the Jews, 
you wouldn't find a Jew pass around a dollar with Hitler's, Goebbels, or anybody face on that dollar. Right. Yeah. Yet we covet and we cherish the dollar that holds our slave masters yeah. and oppressors on it. They wouldn't sponsor, if they found out a company was backing Nazi Germany at the time of the Holocaust, the Jewish people wouldn't sponsor that. They would get fired. In fact, they got hunters now looking for old Nazi people. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and once you have that mentality, I think that's why the West is so frowned upon because it's always about me, individuality. Yeah, very mm. You know, what I mean? yeah. 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 and I know for myself, I was a very individualistic person mm -hmm. because okay. that's how I was raised and brought up in this society. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I went on a spiritual, deeper spiritual level, then I started thinking outside of myself. Um, that I realized there's a lot more going on in this world and there's a lot more things I need to be involved in as a black male and right. as a human being and as a person to better change this world. And it, if we can't find that intrinsic nature to want to better ourselves and not be controlled by our political um, and spiritual leaders, um, then we're going to continue to have a problem. We're going to exactly. continue to suffer from capitalism and oppression and all these other things we suffer from um, until we learn how to I, as a teacher, I used to tell all my students, think for yourself. Mm -hmm. I didn't teach them mm -hmm. how, how to think, or uh, I didn't teach them what to think. I just mm -hmm. taught them how to think. Mm -hmm. okay. Think rational, think logical, mm -hmm. and think for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so right. true. Well, no, no you can go for sure. No, no, because he, he just sparked, he, he just triggered a um, nerve. <laughs> Yanga, you know, yesterday. Yeah. We went to the Malcolm X Festival. Man, was we there? Yeah, we were there. Malcolm X Festival? Yeah. 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 I'm out. Yeah, it was, in your form. Yeah, and it was some clowns. You didn't miss anything. Some clowns oh. is what you meant. Exactly. <laughs> okay. uh -oh. What uh, Brother Vince was saying mm. about you know how you know the the, the selfishness. Yes. Now mm -hmm. we were talking That's to some talk. Yeah. 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 yeah, it is. You know, and, yeah. and, and it's funny how you know mm -hmm. we talk about you know we were getting into it about how you know you know the Moors we can we, we don't have to get pulled over this and that blah blah blah. They but they ignored the fact I said you know Saddam Hussein was hung. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On national TV, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Omar Gaddafi was shot on national mm. TV, and yeah. they just disregarded that. Yeah. Is that mm -hmm. part of the selfishness that, he was talking it's, about? Absolutely, it's like uh, Brother Gideon said that rugged individualism. Mm. I think that the African here in America, he doesn't have a clear vision and a clear goal, and I'm going to mm. constantly reiterate that fact mm -hmm. until we teach it. When we look at other nationalities, it's incorporated it is a part of their culture. It is a duty mm -hmm. to carry on. From the ancestors, mm, right? You know what I'm right. saying? We have mm, we have mm, distanced ourselves from that, right. from we've the ancestors of that. Of that. We've, we've been, been stripped we've of been that. Stripped. So from our ancestry, from slavery, we've been stripped from it. We've been hauled. We we've been fooled. Bad from, news. Bad and all that good stuff. So you know when we talk about the shoulder of Nat Turner and the, the our ancestors from slavery who fought for our empowerment and liberation, that got hijacked. Mm. It became mm. the message of integration, mm -hmm. assimilation. Mm. That is our freedom. Right. Mm -hmm. As long right. as we get these certain rights, as long mm -hmm. as we allowed to do what other people are allowed to do. Mm -hmm. So what that did mm -hmm. is that changed our morals and our ethics. Mm -hmm. No longer was black manhood defined by the man coming home, even if your father was a garbage man right. coming home and taking care of his family mm -hmm. and raising his children. Mm -hmm. Black manhood got defined by your maternity material possession. Exactly. Oh, Just because we were living next to another people who measured their manhood to that. Exactly. We started to do that. I think that to go back to like what the brother was saying, we have to teach our, our young men and women to think for themselves, mm -hmm. but to think for themselves with a sense of obligation and responsibility. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, question about Mariam, was you born over here? Yeah, I was born here. Just yeah. like, and we were talking about that. I said, I marvel at this young woman. Mm. The young woman was born over in the United States, and mm. she talks like she's fresh off the boat from Palestine. Come here, and she takes the latest motor over there, like yeah. she was there yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like so you said, we had. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I get completely what you're saying. Like when I see black people defending the United States, I want to say you're not American. Right. None of us right. are American. Even white people, they're European settlers in the exactly. words of Stokely Carmichael. Michael, that mm -hmm. they're not even Americans themselves, but mm -hmm. we are most definitely not here voluntarily. Mm -hmm. Arabs are here because you destroyed our nation and we had nowhere else to go. Right. Africans are here because you took them out of their homes and forced them to build a country that you discriminate against right. them in. And, mm -hmm. it's just, and that's where the American mm -hmm. exceptionalism comes in, where we can torture, but nobody else can torture. Right. We right. can right. torture. Right. It's enhanced interrogation. <laughs> 
exactly in the I'm doing the exact same thing. You don't accuse Cuba of human rights violations while having Guantanamo Bay on the same exact island. The hypocrisy is like staggering in um what we were talking about is um, the Jews and the homosexuals. Mm. I wanted to say that. Jews make up less than 2% of the world population. Mm. Who would have thought? The, the <laughs> amount of power they have, oh, and it's not mm. anti-Semitic. Mm. Jewish people, especially in the United States, mm. there is such a large lobby. I mean, like, mm -hmm. every yes. single year mm -hmm. in schools, we learn about the Holocaust. Yes. Like, every mm -hmm. single year. And mm -hmm. it, it's not wrong, but it's like, mm -hmm. can we hear about the Holocaust that mm -hmm. are happening right now? The genocide that are happening right now yes. in Palestine, yeah. what the Jewish people are yeah. doing to Palestinian people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with, like, homosexuals, mm -hmm. where it's it, it was never even really an issue, but now it's because the American people have become so um, simple-minded. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I understand mm -hmm. love. You can love anybody. But mm -hmm. they don't want to talk about like black oppression because you got to think a little and you got to yeah. do a little research. <laughs> yeah. You got to think about what the United yeah. States has done. Whereas in the 60s, American people used to um, listen to whatever was told on the TV or on the radio. And they used to be like, America's number one. Now people are like, I don't care if America's number one. I don't care if it's last. It doesn't yeah. concern me. Yeah. You know? And that's that's what has happened. Like, the youth, you won't like hear like the common American kid being like, I love America to death or whatever, but they're right. like, nah, I don't care. I yeah. just... It doesn't right. matter to me, and that's what it's a, a new kind of stupidity. Instead of just <laughs> believing everything you hear, you hear it and it goes out the other way. Well, it's ear. a new Jim Crow. Uh, yeah. You know, see, the prison industrial complex and the military industrial complex are the undergirdings of those yeah. two complexes, mm -hmm. is the educational are the miseducational mis system mm -hmm. that is putting our children it is a pipeline to the drug house because not only are they introducing the children where it used to be you know nancy Dre or nancy reagan said just say just no say no, say no. Uh, to drugs yeah now the school is the number one drug dealer on the oh, planet yeah, yeah. Woodland and other school uh, types of drug, uh, oh, yeah. other drugs that they're infusing in our children and they've made through their own statistics made a correlation between the school and the prison mm -hmm. and then of course from prison to, uh, it's for school to military. Mm -hmm. So it's still all gang related. Oh, it's still yes. all control mechanisms. All tied to, together. It's all part of the Illuminati world control mechanism for our people. But once again, once we get it in our mind, Willie Head Melanated People are the sacrifice for the League of Nations and the industrialized powers, what they're gathering to do is to destroy woolly haired and melanated yeah. people. But they keep us divided. It's like you said, they keep us divided. Well, we said, form, yeah. uh, yeah. form up. Form up. So and anyone that talks, whether it's Muammar Gaddafi talked about helping us to align. Yeah, and, the United States. Because see, our power yeah. isn't in the natural. Right. Exactly, so, in the different we to We talk America. about the, the power of Esau or the Israelis. That's biblical. Whether you want to acknowledge it, it or not, biblical. it yeah, is yeah, biblical. Right. It's said that they will be power in the nation and among the stars. But the other part that's biblical is the power that's in us. Yeah. The power of Yah and the spirit of the mighty holy people. He said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It's going to be why, why is your Bible prospering, Gideon? Because yeah. well, that, you know, you know, that same corporations built factories with Bibles. They have to bind the Bibles. Mm. They have to print the Bibles. That's Where do you think that's coming from? Not woolly hair, melanated people. <laughs> 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 so, I think one of our things is, like you said, with the um, school to prison pipelines, with the things that happened in America, one of the things that Brother Malcolm did which I greatly admire him for, he took it off a civil rights issue. Hmm. I think that, and this is why I enjoy having Maddie on the show. And yes. Things, until we uh, equate our struggle with the struggle of oppressed people worldwide, right. until we, we're sitting here and she was talking about the women, the Arab women, and going through it, how the man is oppressed at work, and he comes home, mm -hmm. and he takes out on his woman, and mm -hmm. woman takes, it sounded like the black. <laughs> <laughs> until we, until we Equate our struggle from a civil rights mm. into an international thing, mm. international human rights violations, mm. and start to allow ourselves with people who are being oppressed by the same corporates. Right. You see what I'm saying? It's the same bandit robbing all of us. Yeah. We're sitting, it's like we're sitting in the house watching the thieves go through our neighbor's house. And when I get him, he don't come through my damn house. He's not going to come in. We're voted. And I'm sure y'all have noticed this.
because we're black people in the United States, it's very frustrating because if you, when you talk to them, like when you talk to like black people about what's happening and this is what the soldiers have done in our countries, whatever, they're right on board. Whereas like, you know, like yeah. white Americans will disagree with you and they'll fight exactly. with you, whatever. The thing is, it, it, they're not awake because they've been brainwashed for so long that exactly. it just takes an awakening. You know yes. what I mean? And I mean, I'm sure if Malcolm X and the Black Panthers were there by themselves, mm -hmm. then the black, the black population in the United States would be a lot more aware and want a revolution, Absolutely. but you had so many black leaders that were talking about assimilation and integration or whatever, where they just lean toward mm -hmm. more towards that side. But all it takes mm -hmm. is really like shaking the people up. It's, uh -oh. it's all that they're saying. Like there's no, there are black people that will say there's no oppression, yeah. but it's rare. They they know it's there, but they just need a push. They need the right education well, system to no, do no, something. What she's talking about is Ezekiel 45, a body of dry bones. <laughs> <laughs> He said, blue, four ways But I, I think one of my things is, too, is like, with, by, by us not having, see, we'll feel like, like you said, we'll feel like that it's not over there. Say, well, the white man is not oppressed. It's all your decisions. Yes, you can make your own decisions. But if I have decision A and decision B, who put decision A and decision yeah. B in my mind? I don't have a right to make my own decision. So when we take it to an international scale, when we see that this same beast, that this is not unique to us, it's not pulling ourselves up because if it was just simple pulling ourselves up, our Palestinian brothers and sisters would have done it. Come on. These people would have done it. That Come so it is Come the on. same beast exactly. as a systematic That's right. um, way of targeting people, as a systematic way of doing people exactly. that they're practicing this oppression worldwide. That's the first thing. Secondly, like I said, when you run across black people and the reason why we don't uh, buck that and they don't talk against America, mm -hmm. have you ever had a partner work at fast food? And you go try to get some free fries. First thing he gonna tell you, I ain't for lose my job. These Negroes are getting paid by America. They're not gonna lose their job. And even us, even us that don't realize what's happening, a lot of the government aid and the government, the government subsidiaries and the stamps and all that stuff. I gotta come out said the EBTs and all that stuff. We are scared to lose our job. I'm not gonna take the food out of my mouth. Kujakalia, self determination. We have to be a people, right? We have to be a people that go back. To how it was, I'm not saying segregation, mm -hmm. because segregation is when someone else controls your resources mm -hmm. and controls everything mm -hmm. and puts you on the land. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about separation. Mm -hmm. where we control our own resources, Come control on. our own things, Come on. create our own morals and our own values and mm -hmm. our own more ways and more mm -hmm. ways and habits and culture. Mm -hmm. Then we can sit at the table with anyone we want to sit at, even if it be white America, mm -hmm. exactly. and say this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. But the first thing we have to do, and I'm gonna be brief because I know we all want to talk, is we have to do our research. Yeah, yeah. Like we go back to research. the Jews. Like yeah. I was saying, those Jews would not sponsor anybody. They found out that even remotely hmm. had something to do with Nazi Germany. Yeah. Oh. But we will sit here and get behind people who have colonized Africa, uh, uh, Africa of its resources, uh, uh, uh. and then take it from Africa to other oppressed people of the world. <laughs> we'll get behind those people that <laughs> oppress <laughs> Palestine, <laughs> oppress Lebanon, and all the places in the area. So we have to do our resources and withhold our damn dollars. Mm. If we have to pull out the sewing machines again, uh -oh. sewing our own sister here, 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 you just lost them. You <laughs> have <laughs> And, and, yeah, and that's the problem whereas you know revolution for the black community should start in the ghettos it should start yeah. in the hoods but these people they have to take care of their families they have to take care of their children whereas the black population that is more educated that is well off they want to assimilate they want to yeah, be seen exactly. with this white exactly. company so the people that should be doing something have comp they don't even care about black exactly. rights and the people that right. would want to do something they have other things on their minds but ideally where it should start is in the ghettos where these people this oppression is happening to them every single day they see it but what can they do you know like when you have like three children you're you care more about getting them through life you know what i mean and that's what the problem is um like you were saying about assimilating uh not only once they assimilate they forget about oh, the exactly. ones that are left behind. where they came mm -hmm. from um and i want to say this last thing on a humanitarian note uh worldwide mm -hmm. We have to stop looking at people as a commodity, mm. okay? And I want to make this point and give this quote from Susan Rice, who is the um, National Security Advisor. Right. Mm -mm. She gave this quote um, in December at the Human Rights First Summit 
And she was asked about why the U.S. isn't more involved in the Saudi Arabia human rights plight. Mm -hmm. Are these activists being locked up? The activists want to know. (laughs) 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 And this is what Susan Rice said. Quote, let's be honest. At times, we do business with governments that do not respect the rights we hold most dear. Mm -hmm. We have to make tough choices. Mm. So basically, what Mm. she's saying is, we're looking at the business side of what we have going on exactly. with Saudi Arabia, mm. given that they're our number one oil contributor mm. in the world, and we just made a $60 billion arms deal with mm. this nation. Mm. Okay? Mm. So, yeah, I know you guys are having these human rights <laughs> issues. <laughs> and you yeah, yeah. Your, 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 your activist leaders are being locked up. We're going to get to that in <laughs> We're going to take care of these businesses. <laughs> So we gotta, we gotta we gotta treat oh my this as the human issues and stop treating people as commodities. Yeah, exactly, really. that's right, the bottom. What a way to go! Huh? Yeah, yeah, check this. us out. Yes, we out. Yes. 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 Yes.